big show for you tonight, folks. I hope you're feeling a little cheesy tonight. Ha-ha. <laughs> Emerald Lugasi, welcome to Emerald Live. You know, it's, uh, it's unbelievable what's happened uh, in America. When you, uh, when you say cheese or American cheese, it used to be like, uh, you know, slices and yellow, and that was it. Maybe a little bit of common bear if you were lucky, but it was, really wasn't American-made. Today, this uh, thing that's happened the last couple of years called artisanal or artist cheeses is just spreading like wildfire here in America. And it's really taken on a new twist of all the different American artisanal cheeses from New York to California to uh, Iowa. I mean, everywhere you look, there are all these special cheeses and not just cow's milk cheese, goat cheese and sheep milk cheese, hard cheeses, blue cheeses. So uh, have you ever had a New York State common bear, a little uh, sheep's, right? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. So tonight, we're going to do a little cheese story. Speaking about cheese, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Cheesy. We're talking cheeses tonight. All right. <laughs> hey. Stay with us, because it's all about great American cheeses tonight on Emerald Live. We got Hank back, you know. Oh, we got him. How the boys doing tonight? Everybody all right? Everybody's Feeling down. good? Yeah. Feeling cheesy, oh, yeah. I hope. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's like oh, every night for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's, before we start making some great dishes, because I'm really, um, I've been confused about this for a long time, about cheeses. It is confusing. It's a confusing you know, in France, it's been there for hundreds of years, but uh, in, here in America, it's fairly new to us. So let me just kind of give you a little quick, just come with me for a little bit. Just come with me. First category, fresh cheeses. And I think we're going to make a dish probably in every category tonight. But fresh cheeses are uncooked. They're unripened cheeses. Okay, so you got curd, you got whey, water, and the curd. And these fresh cheeses are usually very moist and mild. Here's some examples. Cream cheese, ricotta cheese. That would be fresh cheese. Second category, soft ripen, or the classical name is called bloomy rind. Stay with the soft ripened. Anyhow, this is a semi-soft consistency cheese, and uh, it's exposed to mold. Now, let me, let me just clarify this for a minute. Great cheese has to be exposed to mold. There's just something in the air, in the cheese cellar, et cetera, for it to be great, great cheeses, okay? These uh, soft cheeses uh, sort of get ripened inside before they go outside. Brie, Common Bear, Andre, even goat cheese, all right? Whew. Now, there's another category called washed rinds. I'm not making this stuff up. Come with me for the journey. <laughs> These are treated. The wash rinds are treated or cured. And basically why that is is they're brushed with either or washed or they're immersed in like brine of salt or brandy, beer. Um, and then they get this sort of uh, desirable, smelly quality. That's what it is. Like Munster cheese. Okay? Go to a cheese shop. Let them help you out. There's a lot of them in the city. There are a lot of them in the country. Let me just go and simplify something. I want to go to the first category for a second. Check this out. Thank you. Don't trip me. <laughs> this is uh, the soft cheeses that we're going to go to first, and this is just sort of a few examples. You, are you going to come here for the journey? Um, California. This is a triple cream brie cheese right here which is uh, probably the most popular 
other than cheddar in the, in the United States right now. So a triple cream brie cheese here. Uh, Caproli Bonin here. This is a goat cheese from Indiana. See, it's sort of wrapped in these, uh, in these grape leaves, brushed. This is a, a Georgia pecan chev, another name for chev being goat cheese. And a sheep cheese that uh, is here from New York called Mutton Buttons. And that's what I'm going to use right now. Oh, yeah, isn't that cute? Mutton <laughs> Buttons. So here's the Mutton Buttons right here. Have you ever heard of these, Doc? Never. It's unbelievable what's going out there. I got to tell you, the, uh, the folks in California especially are really lucky. There's so many incredible artisanal cheeses being made out there. It's, wow. it's just... All right, let's do the first dish. I thought with the button muttons, what we would do is make a real simple salad. So uh, I got a little French baguette that I'm going to cut here with my serrated knife, sort of a little bit on the angle. And what I'm going to do is make quickly just some quick croutons in this non-stick skillet with a little bit of butter. So we want to have the heat high, but not too high, like medium high would be good. And then we'll go, what we're going to do is we're going to just toss these croutons in here real quick till we get a little color on them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these croutons. We're actually going to use the mutton button cheese that we'll cut in half on the crouton, and then we'll bake them in the oven for a little goat cheese crostini. What I'm going to use them for is a salad. And with the salad, because now's the season, I thought I would make just a real simple blackberry vinaigrette. So I'm going to take fresh blackberries, a little blackberry vinegar, or you could use regular white vinegar, a little honey for sweetness. Oh, yeah, babe. It's a big budget show here. And uh, for me, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, Dijon mustard. And then, of course, a little shallots and garlic in here. Oh, yeah, you got to have a little shallots and garlic. <laughs> that was a little riff that I got from Doc Gibbs last night. <laughs> All right, now what we're going to do, we have a little salt, a mm -mm -mm, little fresh ground pepper. And then what you got to do, Doc, is you got to drizzle the oil in this thing so that slowly... I got my hand here, and then what we're going to do is a ex little extra virgin olive oil. you got to drizzle it slowly to get the emulsion. So. i got a little blackberry vinaigrette. I'm going to finish these croutons with the button mutton cheese. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> American artisanal cheeses tonight. Button muttons. Mutton buttons. <laughs> How are my friends from the USO doing? All right? Everybody okay over there? All right? You guys all right? All right. So look, now I, uh, I slice the cheese sort of this way. Maybe like a third. Okay? Half. Whole. <laughs> Big budget here, this show, you know? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop them in the oven... I don't have the oven on too high, like 325, 300. We just sort of want to melt the cheese. The dressing's made. The blackberry vinaigrette. Got to taste it. Why? Huh. I don't want to use you as guinea pigs. <laughs> so that'll tell you, oh, yeah, it needs more salt. Mmm, oh, no, more pepper, whatever. It's perfect. <laughs> Then what I want to do is I want to strain it. 
Now, if you don't want to strain it, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Why am I straining it? Because the blackberries, just like raspberries, you got those little seeds in there, right? Hey, maybe you want the seeds. So we're going to strain it. And uh, I just sort of pass it through a little fine mesh. And uh, now we've got the dressing complete. Now, if you're not going to use it all, you can put this in an airtight container. Keep it in the ice box. That'd be the refrigerator. <laughs> keep up to a week. If it lasts that long. All right, so that's done. So we got the dressing. Now, real simple. Here's what we're going to do. I've got some field greens, little assortment here, field greens. One of the biggest mistakes people make, really, you should invest in one of those, like, those lettuce spinner things. You know, because if not, and you use paper towels or whatever, you know, not only is it going to take you longer, but more salads are ruined because the lettuces are not dried. And let me tell you something. You go to the store and you see those lettuces that are in there and it says pre-washed. Yeah, right. Okay, well, I wash my greens. <laughs> Just, you know, it's a habit. <laughs> so now we're ready to uh, sort of make, this, uh, make the salad. So uh, we're going to wash them, dry them real good. A little salt and pepper, because I don't know where you get your greens. Where I get mine, they don't come seasoned. Barely washed. <laughs> and uh, now we're just going to put this thing together. So uh, we we'll use a little bit of the dressing. I don't like to over, overdress my salad either. I mean, I'd rather you can put more on. It's kind of less is more. And, and don't go in there like, what do they do to you? <laughs> Gingerly. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Now. To finish the salad, toasted walnuts, good thing also to go with cheese. We'll talk more about that later in the show. Ah, we have friends here tonight. So I just sort of garnish it with a few blackberries. An escapee. Some walnuts. And then the uh, mutton buttons should be, like, just perfect right now. You know, just... Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So then we take a few mutton button croutons. Oh, yes. Doesn't that look great? Oh, smelling real good. So there you have it, folks, a little salad with mutton button cheese from New York State, all right? <laughs> so now the uh, mutton button, we're going to move over now to a little uh, semi-soft cheeses. And uh, what are those? Semi-firm to very firm cheeses that are quite young, generally, only like weeks old. So it's not fresh cheese, but they're not aged for several, several months, okay? Um, these cheeses, because they're not aged a long time, have a lot more moisture. They're sort of the soft and soft ripened types. Are you with me? There's a quiz at the end of this, you know, I just want you to know. <laughs> So things like aged goat cheese or Gouda fall under this category. Gruyere, young Parmesan Reggiano, young Parmesan Reggiano. Here's some right here. From North Carolina, there's this uh, Smoky Mountain Round. It's got a little <laughs> smokiness to it. Oh, I love that. I think we're going to use that. <laughs> yes. But some are others. There's a sheep cheese here. Sweet clover from Colorado. See, they're not really semi-soft cheeses. Feta cheese. This is a, a Louisiana goat feta cheese. 
Oh, yeah, put some of that on the old lasagna, hey? <laughs> and um, Red Hawk from California. This is a cow's cheese. You can see how this is... See how it's semi-soft? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking cheese here, Rhoda. <laughs> Rhoda's telling me I gotta go right now on a commercial break. <laughs> so when we come back, another notch! Back in! <laughs> So before we went to the uh, commercial break, we were talking about this Smoky Mountain Road. And uh, it's smoked over pecan wood. So it's got a really, really smoky, delicious. And uh, it's from Goat Lady Dairy. I love these names. They come up with these. Yeah. So from North Carolina. All right. I'm making a potato and uh, the Smoky Mountain Round cheese gratin. Looking for that quick and easy, like, side dish? Here it is. I layered my, uh, my dish with butter, sliced potatoes, and we're going with a little salt, a little pepper. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the Smoky Mountain. Look at that. Crumble it right in there. So that smokiness is going to come out in this little gratin, too. Another layer of taters. Okay. Mmm, yes. Oh, a little more salt. <laughs> Pepper. Some more of that cheese. Smoky Mountain Road. It's like a song like that, right? Yeah. Smoky Mountain Road. <laughs> more taters. A little garlic. And then what we're going to do now, a little salt. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh ground pepper, more of that cheese. Oh, yeah. Then what you do, set your oven on about 375 degrees. We're going to pour a little cream. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, good to the last drop. Then we're going to bake this in the oven until that fork tender. Are you with me? Now, while this is baking, I'm going to use a, a hard cheese next. And this hard cheese that we're going to use is a Jack-style cheese. It actually is uh, Sonoma Dry Jack is what it's called. It's from Vela Cheese Company in Sonoma, California. So what we're going to do, these are the next category right here. Cheddar. Look at this from Louisiana. This one here, dry jack. See, look. That would be a hard cheese. It's all coming back to you now, isn't it, huh? Usually one or two years, even up to like six years, that they'll age these hard cheeses, like cheddar, Swiss, aged Parmesan. So I'm thinking a little pasta dish with this jack cheese. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around, Doc Gibbs!
Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Y'all having a good time so far? <laughs> Emma Lagasse here. We're having a great, great show tonight, doing uh, American artisanal cheeses tonight, and it's unbelievable. Go stick your head in a cheese shop if you haven't been in one for a while, and uh, just go and see what's happening there. It's amazing. It's exciting. We uh, took some of the California Dry Jack, which is a cow's cheese, and we grated it for this dish. We got pasta in the water, which is uh, cooking away. And uh, what I'm going to show you is we're going to make for this pasta dish. Got some linguine in here. I'm going to do some prosciutto wrapped scallops, and I'm going to make a little uh, pesto with that Dry Jack cheese, just in case you just joined us. <laughs> so. Get the uh, prosciutto, you know, they slice it pretty thin. These are diver scallops, so they're not, they didn't dredge these. These are, these are actually hand-picked, and uh, you want to take the abductor. What I do is get a little piece of prosciutto, and um, on the outer edge here, I just sort of wrap them up like a little blanket. Oh, yes. <laughs> scallops in a blanket. So that's what we'll do there. Now, while the pasta's cooking, we're going to get a skillet on here, about medium-high heat. We're going to begin with just a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, tiny bit. Regular olive oil would work as well, and I'm going to show you a trick. We're going to season the scallops. That's only one side. Then we're gonna start searing these babies. Oh, yes. Now, most times what happens, I find people try to, they overcook the scallop a little bit. And uh, you don't wanna do that. So, a little salt, pepper on the other side, because I hate one sided tasting food. Give it to me, baby. I want it all. <laughs> Don't be playing with my emotions. Don't you hate that? You go to... Yeah, you go there. One-sided tasting food. All right. While those are searing, fresh basil. I, I just love fresh basil, you know? Yeah. Just something about it. So we've got that. Some walnuts. Got to have garlic. Some pine nuts that I toasted as well. What I do now is first I go in and I just let that chop up the basil first a little bit. Then you see that? Oh, how nice. <laughs> then what we're going to do... See, if I didn't do that, Doc would steal it anyhow. <laughs> He'd be using it in his next song. <laughs> All right, now what I want to do is I want to stop this for a second. Let's go over here because we don't want to overcook the scallops. Oh, look at how beautiful. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I'm thinking about doing this for a living. <laughs> All right, so the scallops are happy. I'm going to show you that. Now, that beautiful Jack cheese... Oh, yeah, babe. Oh. So now, some salt. Mm -hmm. Fresh ground pepper. Love that. Feel like I'm at the restaurant, you know? I'm not going there. I'm trying to keep it G, ladies. So now, you want it chunky, you want it smoother. I don't put eggs in mine. Some people want to put an egg, whatever. Extra virgin olive oil. Yes. 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 Done. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that. We're going to drain the pasta if it's ready. Is it ready is the big question. Okay. 
I like it al dente, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. So now we're going to drain this out. Here's another pet peeve of mine. You cook the sauce like six hours on Sunday on the stove. The meatballs, the brujol, all the nice stuff in there. Now it's time to eat. Put the pasta in. You didn't drain the water. Now the sauce is ruined. Six hours just went down the tubes. Drain it good. So here's how we're going to finish it. We're going to take the linguine. If it doesn't want to cooperate at this point, it's staying in the pan. That's how I look at it. You lost out. Go tell your little friend that. Now, a little butter. Don't tell anybody. Turn the heat off. Turn the heat off. A little butter. Don't tell anybody. Now, season the pasta. Oh, yeah, babe. Now the pesto. Then we toss it just a little bit like this and this and this and this and this, this and that. And one scallop for me. And another one for me. That one can be yours. That one's back for me. So a little prosciutto wrap scallop with a little pesto with that jack cheese, toasted pine nuts, a little bit of basil like that. There you have it, all right? There you have it. This next dish, I have uh, kielbasa. Use whatever sausage you want. We're going to make render that. Then I'm going to add onion and bay leaves to that. What we're going to do is we're going to use this 10-year-old Wisconsin cheddar cheese. Absolutely fantastic. You know what we're going to do with it? We're going to make a cheddar and beer soup when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> Folks, cooking with American artisanal cheeses tonight. I'm so excited I can barely speak. We just did a diver scallop wrapped in prosciutto with a little pesto with a California jack that we used. Uh, dried jack, cow's cheese, pesto. Oh, yes, with linguine. I've uh, rendered down that um, kielbasa sausage in a little oil, a couple of bay leaves, and I've added about two small onions chopped up in there. Once we get the two small onions and the bay leaf in there, about five minutes, watch this, what we're going to do now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add garlic. And then we're going to add some flour to sort of make a roux. How much? Well, let's see what it's going to take here for this to come together, scraping down the bottom. It looks pretty good to me right there. Now what we're going to do... Cook the roux, four or five minutes, we're going to add chicken broth. Whenever you're working with a thickening agent, like flour that we just made a roux, or cornstarch, or arrowroot, you'll never know how thick it's going to be until it comes to a boil. So not only am I working the stock in the flour, what I'm now going to do, because I'm making a little beer soup. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> this is a little bit of lager. And we're going to use that in here. Why two? Ah, it sounded like a good number to me. <laughs> so, you let this simmer about 45 minutes. And the evaporation starts happening. And the concentration and flavor starts happening as well. Right? And then, 
this in about 45 minutes. You can see the volume of that right now is this in 45 minutes. Let it come to a boil and let it simmer 45 minutes. Here's the thickness of it right now. But we're not done. We're going to add a little time. And then we're going to take that awesome 10-year cheddar from Wisconsin. And, uh, oh, yeah, babe. It's from Hooks. Hooks 10-year cheddar. I've grated some of the grater. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the cheddar cheese in here now. And then we're going to let this incorporate inside of the soup. Meanwhile, in a skillet and a cover, what I did is I took a little oil and I made some popcorn. When the popcorn got done popping, come on, we popped corn. <laughs> I sprinkled it with a little essence and grated Parmesan cheese. Speaking about that, oh, yes. About an hour goes by. And there is that potato gratin that we made earlier. So you want to serve that on the side. Watch the consistency of this now. Oh, yeah, babe. So. Check that out. Doesn't that look great with that cheese, huh? All right. Back to the soup. The cheddar cheese is now incorporated in there. So what we want to do is we want to taste it. That whole guinea pig thing, right? You know, does it need more salt, pepper, etc.? Wow. Pretty cheesy. So when you want to serve this up, here's how I like to do it. I take my cheddar cheese soup, flavored with a little beer or lager, that hooks cheddar cheese, the kielbasa, right? A little bit of that, some beautiful chives, and then I take that awesome popcorn that we popped, and I use that as a little garnish in there. So when you're eating the soup, you get the popcorn, you get the whole cheddar thing. Are you with me out there, hey? All right, there you have it. Let's talk about Let's talk about another type of cheese, blue vein cheeses. Yeah, one of my favorites. These guys are sort of Can I move this buck? Is that all right or you're going to have a heart attack? <laughs> I can? Got to ask the camera guys that, you know. Is this a better view for you, buck? So look at the blue vein cheeses. Basically, they're marbled blue-green mold, okay? Penicillin sometimes is injected inside of it, which starts the mold. If you're allergic to penicillin, you may want to uh, ask your doctor about that thing. I don't know. I'm not one. <laughs> Very intensely flavored. And they're made with all types of milk, usually aged in caves or cellars. This one right here I'm going to use today, which is from Vermont. It's called Bailey Hazen Blue. Look at the mold in that. Oh, yes, and it smells like dirty socks. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. That's why they call them stinky cheeses. Here's another one. This is Maytag Blue Cheese from Iowa. I've been using this for about 20 years. Fantastic. A little Le Petit Blue. Look at that. This is a cow's milk cheese, believe it or not. Oh, not. And then this is Point Rise Original. This is a cow's milk blue cheese. You see it's vertical down because they injected it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cheese here and we're going to take sour cream, onion, garlic, a little uh, Creole cream cheese, which is a little sweeter than regular cream cheese from Louisiana. Hot sauce, cayenne for a little mmm, and a little buttermilk. And then I'm going to take about half of this and crumble it up to make a blue cheese dip. Why? Because I love them. And I love blue cheese. We'll come back. We're going to show you where we're going with these artisanal cheeses. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs>
I want to thank again my friends from the USO to stopping by tonight. And we are doing American artisanal cheeses. I waited for you to do this blue cheese thing. So uh, I got the sour cream, the uh, cream cheese from Louisiana, hot sauce, little buttermilk, and garlic and shallots or onion. And you can do a couple of different things. You can um, basically crumble this by hand. Or you can use a machine. So you can either fold this in and be done with it and have that texture. I kind of like the texture, actually. How's the soup? Different. Delicious, huh? Now, good. So the other thing, if you don't want it that chunky, what you can do is just sort of use a, uh, I wouldn't use a blender, but I'd use one of these handheld mixers. And you could just uh, kind of go in there and break it down a little bit more smaller if you want. I don't like it when it's all smooth, though. I, I want to have some, I want to have some of those chunks in there. So when you're ready, a little crudité. Oh, yeah, babe. And we'll put that chunky. Looks good to me. All right. There's that. Now, what do you serve with cheeses? I'm asked that question a lot. And um, you never want to serve citrus. Grapes are the easiest thing to do. I'm going to make this little quick compote show you that I do with figs. Don't worry. If they're not fresh, you could use the dry ones that are out there. Here's what we do. We just take a little sugar and some port wine. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> port goes well with cheese. So we want to just sort of make a little liquid like this. A little H2O. And then what we do is we add the dry figs in here and we bring them back to life. Okay? Now, depending, that works just fine for me, that combo with cheese. But uh, if you got time, you want to kick it up a few notches, you can make yourself a little, uh, sometimes what I'll do to flavor it a little different, I'll take some orange peel, nice slice of ginger, a cinnamon stick, peppercorns. All of these are components that work well with cheese. Even though I said don't serve citrus with cheese, the peel is going to flavor the port wine. You just sort of tie it up here in some cheesecloth, a little string, and then flavor the port wine another notch. When that's done, this is what it looks like here. So let's talk about this, because it's important. How do I serve cheeses? You got to serve all cheeses at room temperature, folks. You never take cheese out of the ice box, that would be the refrigerator, and serve it. That's like a no-no. You should at least have it out a good hour. Some cheeses, like if you go to the cheese shop, they're going to tell you to leave it out all day. Like there's a cheese that I love called Ypoise. And you don't like want to put Ypoise like in the ice box for hours if you're going to serve it. Hard cheeses take longer. Think about it being rustic. That's what it is, cheese. It's rustic. It's peasant food. So you want to serve it like on a board or like a piece of stone. You know, that's for me. Fancy, schmancy. So we have that we're going to serve with. Then I, um, there are other things. I said grapes are the easiest thing. You should always try to serve bread. And if you want to serve bread, figs work great. Strawberries, grapes. This cheese right here from the Hod family. Winchester Gouda. It's a cow's cheese. Right? We'll take one of these. This is the one from California, Le Petit Blue. I got an email here. This cheese right here, it says, Marie, who's one of our producers, who's fantastic, done a lot of work on this show. She got a phone call yesterday from this Winchester Gouda, said that uh, Emerald has been, uh, was the first chef ever to use my Gouda cheese when he was at Commander's Palace, Small World. 20 years ago, I was using this stuff. But anyhow, 
I don't want to date it. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so we'll take a few other different cheeses. I think one from each variety when you're playing in a little cheese party like this. Bread is always safe. Like baguette, French bread, always safe. Cut it, slice it, serve it. You don't really even have to toast it. Nuts are also work very, very good. It's unbelievable what's happening out there in the American artisanal cheese world. I'm telling you. I'm just delighted to be a part of it. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you next time. <laughs>